Hello, this is Jimmy Mitchell, and we're back with another episode of the Libertarian Uncensored Podcast. Let's get right into it. First, we have House Committee request information from BlackRock and MSCI on funds funneled with the CCP Military Industrial Complex from SVHX.News by Ellen Ella. And I said, they're all embedded for each other anyway. So, the thing is that, you know, the government, the Military Industrial Complex, foreign foreign governments, they're all, I think they're all embedded for each other. They're all... They're all, they're all just, they're all just, they all just have the same goal to enslave you and make you agree with the narrative 100% or else they'll bully you into, and, 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 and gaslight you until you, and they, they, because they want you to, they want you to, they want you to die because they want everyone to agree with them or else, um, they, 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 they just want you dead. That's what, that's what it seems to me. Then we have... Domestic terrorists keep attacking the power grid from Politico.com by Clorox. And I said, the left, these are dangerous right-wing extremists. The right, these are dangerous left-wing extremists. Me, it's probably all a Fed psyop anyway. Then we have Trump declares... He won't leave office if he gets a second term. He'll have his opponents charged based on his whim. And that's a tweet for, uh, that's a post from Clorox. The tweet is from uh, Republicans Against Trump. And I definitely think he's not being too serious here, you know. But, you know, Trump, you know, they always, they'll always find a way to go after him. You know, he, he, I think he's pretty interchangeable, but he lives rent-free in all these people's heads. They just can't stop thinking about him, even though, you know, you don't have to care about him, I would say. Um, you know, you don't have to care about who the president is. You know, the president's really just the figurehead. They're not really in charge. You know, if you think Donald Trump or Joe Biden is the one really running the country over the past years, you know, I think you're just drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, the FBI, CIA, military industrial complex, they're the ones who are really running the country, not Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, etc., etc. Then we have, this is interesting, from Dina B, 3333, and it's a Newsweek article about Libertarian Party, so 2024 is going to be the break career for the LPF, we heard that before. I wonder how they got this article placed. I saw the link for it and never Libertarian group point. I tried to find it from the Newsweek homepage. It was possible without using search and search for Libertarian. I was interested there was no mention of Dave Smith or, and Justin Amash to be thrown in as an afterthought. So, I, I would agree, you know, that it's always supposed to be the Libertarian Party's year. It's always supposed to be the year of the third party, but it's never, I don't know if it's ever going to come. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe if the other two parties collapse, I don't know, but I, I don't know if it's going to be the, ever going to be the, quite the year of the third party. And because, because of how centralized the media is right now. We got a decentralized media, and I think third parties would stand more of a chance. Then we have thoughts on Amy Bundy, and that's a, uh, I posted that. I said I linked to his Wikipedia page. I just learned that Ron Paul endorsed him for Idaho governor last year over the LP nominee, and I got to say that his Wikipedia page impresses me. I like how he's willing to stand up against the state and how he's willing to differ from some GOP dogmas. The second and third paragraphs of the post-occupation section of detail he supports BLM and is against Trump's immigration policies going to a, what I mean. And I also added, I'm sure people will call here, will call his actions terrorism, but I call them standing up to the state. One of my biggest complaints about the George Floyd riots is that the rioters mostly targeted, targeted private businesses instead of government buildings, and I think that is a point Bundy would very much agree with. I also think it's interesting how a lot of lefties go from ACAB to Blue Lives Matter real quickly when the wrong people are anti-police. You know, that's something I also found interesting uh, about when people talk about even Bundy. So then we have Inside the Fight to Forcibly Out Transgender Students in California from Vice.com by Patan 13. And... Um... I, I, I definitely think, you know... I think the parents, uh, I, you know, I don't think schools should be keeping secrets from parents. I think we should have more parents' rights than states' rights, I would say. But with that being said, you know, I guess you do have a libertarian argument for both sides here, I would say. Um, if you want to, if you think the children have a right to keep secrets, I think you can make the argument that that could be a libertarian position. And I, I, I personally think we should, we should try and be as open to parents as possible because, you know, a lot of this is, 
might be you know kids might harm themselves if 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 they have if they if they if they if they go deep down the rabbit hole I would say and that's something that I think that parents should probably know about but that's just my argument I would say. Then we have deprivation of constitutional rights from Pat Brown down across most from the r slash legalized freedom subreddit and it is a, a a picture of the constitutional arms permit and I think that that is. I personally would say, if you want to use that, I think you should be able to. But I personally say you don't need a per you shouldn't need a permit license for a permit license for anything. You should be able to do whatever you want as long as you're not violating the NAPS. So that's my fault. That's my fault on that issue. Then we have. Top eleven RMA gas by it from SVX H SVX H S V X S H X H X News, another one by Ellenella. And yeah, I definitely agree that, you know, a lot of military industrial spending is what is wasteful as this article kinda of goes into how they just kind of throw it on whatever delusional projects they have. Like um, what would they have listed? Um let's just see. I don't know if I can um let's see, uh let me look at new tab. Uh, yeah, they just had a bunch of delusional projects, I would say. And, yeah, they have stuff like CGX, Kinetic Energy Interceptor. I think that's kind of delusional. That's the top one. Strategic Defense Initiatives, a.k.a. Star Wars. You know, you do, they want to try to make Star Wars real, so... You know, that's just kind of how delusional they are, and that's why we can't have... Spent, spent, we got to, that's why we probably have to cut our military budget, I would say. Especially since, you know, that's kind of all... We really, we really like the fun, regardless. But that's why I think, you know, we gotta cut our military budget and cut our military presence overseas. And all the drone strikes as well. Then we have, have Texas paid Bitcoin miner more than $31 million to cut energy usage during heat wave from CBSNews.com by Ninja Lover. And I think that is... I, I guess I, I personally would be fine with that because, you know, I think if, 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 this, if, if, people, if a person wants to use their private resources... For any for, for for something they should be able to, and if the state wants to pay them not to, I think they should be able to as well. So I personally would be fine with that. Then we have unions and violence. Unfortunately, uh, from Room My Circles work from FE.org, and he, and he, they added, unfortunately, I don't expect people to come to violence by their sacred cows. And I definitely would agree there. You know, the thing is with unions is is that you know they're a collective. And I personally think if you want to form a volunteer collective like union, I think you should be able to. I was a member of a union once when I worked at a grocery store. But I think the thing with the unions is you have to remember we need to support the individual rights over the collective rights. And that's why I support the rights of the individual worker. I would say over the collective of the collective union. Then we have. The U.S. government told us the terrorists attacked us on 9-11 because of our freedoms. The terrorists themselves told us they attacked us on 9-11 because of our government's murderous foreign policy, support for Israel, and military bases in the Middle East from LP National on Twitter. And I posted that and I said, and the U.S. government still hasn't changed course at all. Shaking my head, you know, the thing is, at least I think people seemed, on both sides of the aisle, seemed a bit more attuned to the U.S. security state these days, especially on the right side of the aisle, thanks to, I mean, I don't really like the guy, but Donald Trump really does, did seem to get some of that uh, stuff out. You know, I personally think he's, he supports the military industrial complex more than he looks on, like he has people like John Bolton in there when he when he's in power. But I definitely think, you know, his movement has kind of led the right more away from the, uh, the um, U.S. security state and the left, but I personally think you know we you are seeing increasingly criticisms of the of the U.S. security state. Like Michael Mouse posted um, on, he said, if you told me conservative Republicans would be posting music like this someday, I would have laughed in your face. And it was Mass and Call for an Instagram, which tweeted, "Rip to the tw- tw- posted rip to the tw- two thousand nine hundred ninety six Americans dying nine eleven, and rip to the one million forty five four hundred forty five thousand five hundred ninety innocent Muslims who died during the U.S. invasion for something they didn't do." So, you know, yeah, I definitely do think that is a good step in the right direction. But still, I think, you know, the security state is still the one in charge, so nothing has really changed too much, I would say. Then we have New Mexico Governor's Temporary Ban on Carrying Guns in Public Meets Resistance from abcnews.go.com by Legio X. And I said, testing the waters to see how much they can get away with. And I added relevant Thomas Massey tweet, and he tweeted, um... 
Ultimately, government is whatever the people in power can get away with and whatever the people they govern will tolerate. This holds true for all governments, whether they be republics, democracies, dictatorships, monarchies, socialists, or communists. Non-compliance is key. And I will very much agree with that. Then we have Pelosi announces re-elected age 83 from Breaking Points. And I posted that and I said... Um... Uh, that's why I don't. Li- that's why I don't like about democracy. It was, why should near cadavers like this be making decisions for people because a bunch of knuckleheads think so? Democracy is other people making decisions for you, and only you should make decisions for yourself, which is why I don't care for it. And st- also, add stuff like this is why I'm for for the nuclear option when it comes to the U.S. government. It's time to go back to square one. Next, we have. In 1775, General Thomas Gage instructed all Boston inhabitants to surrender their arms at Fenway Hall for temporary safekeeping. When people complied, the troops confiscated their firearms and never returned them from Donnie Anthony on Twitter. And I posted that and I said, Some things really do never change. And... I added, life is unfair, you can die of anything in any second. If there is a shooting or other an violation, you should be each individual to defend themselves, not that of the state. Again, you might not be able to do, but that is just not an excuse for state authoritarianism. Humans operate under the illusion that they can save everyone, but sadly, it's just not true. You know, if people want guns badly enough, they'll still just get them, even if they're illegal. Same, that's why I'm personally for them, you know, same with abortions, and same with, um, uh, drugs. That's why I'm, you know, we, we can't let the state restrict all those things, because people are just going to get them anyway. You know, people will justify what they justify, and I think that that's a, that's a very big um, part of my libertarian reasoning. And that's you know, the government can justify what it was wanting to justify as well. And that's why I don't think we should give them as much. We should we should try and limit their power as much as possible. And we have, remember, the government and the media are not your friends, and that's a self-post that I made. They, have, they want nothing more but for you to be afraid so that you will let them think, control, and make decisions for you as much as possible. They also need to be engaged as possible so they can implant as many narratives as they want to in you. Stand up for yourself and question everything and everyone, regardless of how much you agree with them. And I think that's a very good argument. You know, pe- they, they, people want to... So everyone has something to sell you, and they all want to, and everyone wants to influence you as much as possible. I would say, and it's a very important to remember, especially in the age of social media. Then we have "Victimless Crime" by Nathan R. H. And that sounds interest. That sounds interesting about how, um, yeah. I, 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 and I said I agree. Uh, they have a, a few paragraphs there on "Victimless Crime." I said I agree. I don't think "Victimless Crime" should be illegal. With that being said, I think if you are publicly masturbating, it should probably be stigmatized. Then we have, during the last presidential election, how many options did you have on the ballot and how many do you think you have on the next one? And I said, I'm from Pennsylvania, and so I only had three options on the ballot last time outside of write-ins. Democratic, Republican, Libertarian. I drew from five in 2016 when the Green Party and Constitution Party also made the ballot. With the state increasingly making it harder and, for, and harder for third parties to get on the ballot, and with Donald Trump's legal troubles, I wouldn't be surprised if some states only have the Democratic candidate on the ballot next election. It would be like living in fucking North Korea. And I, and I added... Ultimately, I do think that they have to maintain the illusion of competition, so I'm not 100% sure it will happen. But like with the New Mexico governor's new order, it's all very much about what they think they can get away with. Then we have update the Philly soda tax scam five years later from John Stoss on YouTube, and I posted that. And I, and I, I like that video because, you know, it says, oh, oh they showed people that, so they said, oh, we're getting pizza, but, you know, if I want to get soda, I have to go across the street because the Montgomery County doesn't have the soda tax where the city of Philadelphia does. And I, that's very much how taxes work. You know, I don't think people should be drinking should be drinking all the soda. I think it's not good for you. But I think, you know, I don't think it's the government's job to take to, ta- to tax it. You know, the government, you know, why don't they just have a tax for breathing air next? You know, that's probably what they'll do. They'll probably have a tax for existing next for all week, for all I know. And that's something, you know, I think we need to let, not, not let the government take all this money from us because they, they want to fund, to fund bullshit programs and just throw money, burn money away. That's my thoughts there. And then finally, we have Texas student suspended over his lock hairstyle two days after the state's crown act takes effect from CNN.com by Whittling Dan. And I couldn't post on that one since they blocked me. But um, I would say that 
Um, I, you know, CNN, I, I personally think that's kind of authoritarian there. You know, it might be, you might consider it district rules, but I do consider that kind of authoritarian. And I also have to remember, CNN might not be telling you the full headline here, because, you know, they always try and uh, manipulate stories to suit their agenda, I would say. But yeah, I definitely do think this is authoritarian. That's why we got to emphasize school choice, I would say. And uh, let's see if there's anything new. Um, oh, oh, we have a new one. Colorado deputies fired over tasing grandfather at 35 times. Most clear cut case of police sanctions, brutality, and abuse from uh, Flimsy Out 563 from CBSNews.com. And I definitely would agree that is police authoritarianism and we shouldn't be justifying it. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. And I'll see you guys next episode. Bye.